How's it going guys, welcome back to the channel, my name is Ken This is the channel where we talk about filmmaking, photography, iPad Pro related content and tech This is part 2 of the PC build video In case you missed the first one, please watch it first to get the context of the video I've added a card on the top right corner, do check it out So in part 2, we will continue to look at the reasons I chose these parts for the build And some benchmark scores, let's get this on And welcome back And for the motherboard, so this is the ASRock Steel Legend which is a B450M motherboard and I think this is actually sufficient enough because the motherboard that we use, there's a B550 motherboard which has a slight future-proof function in the future in case you want to change your CPU and upgrade to a better PC rig you can just use everything that you have, just take out the CPU and replace with a better one and in case the CPU comes from a different generation uh, you might have some compatibility issue the B550 board will actually support you in that sense where they already have factory ready BIOS that you can use in case you upgrade your CPU but in case if you are working on a budget I don't think the B450 or 550 actually matters you can just go with the B450 motherboard and of course the Steel Legend has some RGB effect which you can see I think it's pretty cool for aesthetic purpose but I think there are cheaper B450 boards you can, you can check them out and actually decide for yourself moving on to the RAMs nothing too much to actually comment about the RAM 16 gigs of RAM would actually be sufficient um, if you have the extra cash and you want a really fast PC consider getting 32 gigs of RAM be sure that the motherboard has 4 channels because most probably you actually get 8 gigs of RAM placed at all 4 channels um, these are some of the more typical and conventional way of maxing out your DDR slots um, 16 gigs of RAM should be fine let's move on to the SSD so for the SSD in particular I want to highlight the importance of getting a good SSD which is an NVMe drive nowadays they actually have really high read and write speeds Consider getting the PCIe 4 or the newer NVMe SSD drives that can actually improve your workflow. There are significant differences with render time as the newer SSD can actually have higher read and write speed. Do consider getting a 1TB compared to mine which is a 512GB in case in the future you have um, a lot of things to run, more cache memory available for you to use. And I actually read that a higher capacity SSD actually provides a higher read write speed so you can check them out. Moving on to the GPU, we are rocking the 1650 Super which I talked about it last time which is one of the cheapest budget GPU that I can find right so for 1080p so far that I've used it is so far so good smooth playback of course if you have money you can go for the 20 series because the 30 series just came out and I'm pretty sure there are price drops for the 20 series GPU cards I think 2060 Super is good enough uh, you look at the GDDR which is your virtual memory for graphics uh, you can actually play games significant improve in FPS games when you have higher virtual memory PSU power supply unit some people say do not cheap out on your PSU I am not sure what to comment about that because my PSU is the cheapest thing that I have in my rig is the Thermotech 550W so be my guest you can uh, follow the exact build that I have or you can upgrade yourself to a Corsair PSU I'm not sure some people say they are pretty good I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys so here are some of the real life benchmark scores using Adobe Premiere Pro as my video editor and actually include some of the exporting rendering time and playback resolutions feedback from actually using the PC fortunate enough for me I've actually recorded some footages to actually show you guys about the benchmarks using the Ryzen 5 3600 as well as some benchmark scores comparing to the Ryzen 2600 I've included the CPU temps when the CPU is running on high load so let me quickly flash the scores and benchmarks on the screen and I will um, briefly give you guys a summary of the benchmark scores so I have some of the videos that I've actually used as my benchmark I included them in the benchmark score I have also compared using different SSDs the speed um, the NVMe drive actually has over the external SSD and also the main comparison between the Ryzen 5 3600 versus the Ryzen 5 2600 overall performance shows a slight edge towards the Ryzen 5 3600 but obviously because it is a newer gen CPU this is expected because the 3600 have a slightly higher base clock as well as some extra cache maybe double the cache memory that is available so no doubt the 3600 will be better than the 2600 but for the money that you pay the value I think the 2600 would actually suffice so coming from 
rendering and actually video playback I actually have 1080p smooth playback with some adjustment color grading I have zero frame drops when I'm actually playing back using Premiere Pro and I don't think 4k rendering would be super good I don't have the scores for 4k because my YouTube videos are all 1080p but 4k playback is surprisingly smooth if you don't mix with different codecs so yeah I want to say that 2600 would suffice uh, for 1080p smooth playback pretty quick rendering time i think the 2600 would actually suffice and that's all we have for you guys we have come to the end of the video i hope you guys actually learn a couple of things from the video like deciding what to buy for your next pc build do tag me on can it shoots on instagram if you ever build your own pc and you actually got inspired or encouraged to actually build your very own pc rig i would love to know what are the specs that you guys get thank you all so much for tuning in for those of you who are still watching you guys rock do consider liking the video if you actually enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. As always, I'll see you guys very very soon. Stay safe, peace out. Bye-bye.